everybody, it's Trigger Bar Philosopher. Welcome back out to the range. Today I got a fun gun for you. It's a gun that I've had for quite a while. It's a Radical Integrity Suppressed 556 Upper. We're going to tab it out to the range. We're going to test it and we're going to see how it goes. So let's get going. Okay, well let's take a look at what this rifle is. This is an integrally suppressed, I don't know if you can see in there, the suppressor is made in the factory and built in. It's got a 10 and a half inch barrel and then probably four or five, probably five or six inches of suppressor. Makes it exactly a 16 inch barrel so that it only has to have one tack stamp when you're putting this rifle together. It's made from radical arms. I don't know, I, I've had it for probably two or three years now and it has performed flawlessly. I don't have a ton of rounds on it. We'll talk about some pros and cons as we get going, but I've got the Hollow Sun. It's a 503G. It does not have any kind of hollow any kind of solar on top. I have the Hollow Sun magnifier and the slider under the side. So a little bit of wet out here today. We're gonna be testing the operation and a little bit of inclement weather. I do have an Olight. I do have a Blue Force Alpha Gear sling on it, padded sling. I really like that. Uh, it's just kind of a mil spec, standard mil spec lower from Spikes Tactical. I think it's just a CTR buttstock Magpul MOE SL uh, bottom and the BCM uh, foregrip on here. So, yeah, let's uh, let's take it out. I have had zero issues with that, but let's get a look at it. Okay. I just have some targets loaded up down range. Let's get to shooting with it again. This is the Holosun 503G. It does have the ACSS radical, means the Chevron. has some dro uh, drops in it. Not sure, sure how much a drop chart with a reticle like this is, but you know you do have a magnifier out front. It is a 3X. Probably not going to be shooting a lot of great distance with it, but uh, yeah, let's get to shooting with it. All right, just a few rounds loaded up. We can take a look at how, where we were shooting. I'm not very far back. You get a sense. It is a little bit of a gassy guy. I may want to change this charging handle out. I've had it for a while. But as you can tell, we're right at that time in season where the breath is starting to form. And you can see it. When that gas is blowing back, I can definitely hear it, see it in my eyes. So, uh, yeah, but uh, not bad. And uh, shoots well, shoots reliably, very little recoil impulse in here. Um, I can't remember exactly the buffer system, but I think it's one of these silent capture buffer systems that I have inside here. It's been a few years, but I really enjoy shooting. It's very light recoiling. Again, one of the nice things about having a 10.5 suppressed is that normally they are really loud uh, and create a big fireball. So having it suppressed, it's not going to be the quietest in the world, but definitely something that you want. Also, I'd say this thing is really lightweight, but uh, feels extremely lightweight relative to my Geisley upper, relative to my Daniel Defense upper. And uh, I really like that. And that is, again, including the suppressor and everything that comes with that. One of the things, I do have some heat guards on this. It, it is, and I'm sorry, on this rail it has a 1911 up at the top. It's got uh, a little bit of space for more 1911 rail on the bottom. And it also has some M-lock on the bottom. I like the rail. I will say with the suppressor up there, it does get hot, which is why I recently added this vertical foregrip. I do like to shoot in this angle, but if that thing gets super hot, I may move down to here. Philosophy of use on this rifle, mostly a self a home defense gun. The 10.5 optic on it, it's not going to get really, or sorry, the 10.5 optic, haha. <laughs> the 10.5 barrel length on it, it is not going to be something you're going to be doing long range. Can you shoot at long range? Of course, there's lots of videos on the internet of people using 10.5 rifles to shoot long range. Uh, but it's mostly going to be home defense rifle, and that's why I got it. I have a 300 Blackout, which is my main home defense rifle, and this would be sort of a, a 5.56 variant. I always like to 
have something in 556 five, because I think just the ammo availability is a little bit higher. But if I'm going to pick one, it's going to be my 300 blackout. But this one is no shab. Also, if I'm going to leave for a long time, probably nowadays I'd probably take that Geisley if I'm bugging out. But this is pretty considerable. That, that might be something that one of my uh, spouse or a close friend might be taking with him because it's so lightweight and so versatile uh, in, in that respect. So, all right. So again, we're about 10 yards down here. Hopefully you can see the target this time. I only have one camera on, but I uh, just want to do some, a little bit of build drills. Again, that should be uh, five shots. Raise up, take five shots as quick as you can. I don't have full magazine, so we'll just do as many as we can and and see how we do with uh with how quickly we can get on target let's go all right well we only had about 10 rounds results aren't spectacular trigger bar you definitely need a lot a lot more training okay let's take it back now let's go back to the 100 yard range see how we can do with a <clears throat> Side folder, uh, 3X magnifier, and this ACSS reticle on the Holosun 503G. All right, so what do we have up first is we got some M855. I do realize that we're going to be testing my ability to shoot a red dot with a 3X magnifier, just as much as we're going to be testing an integrally suppressed 10.5 inch barrel. Uh, I'm not expecting this 100 yard shots to be something magnificent, but I do have a couple of boxes of ammo just to, for curiosity's sake and completeness of this review. Also, I did confirm that I have a JP Customs silent capture spring in here. Really is pretty quiet. It quiets down the action, moving back and forth. It also seems to really tame the recoil really well in this thing. Not that this is going to have a lot of recoil, again, that it's suppressed 16 inches. 10 half inch barrel, a nice good suppressor in it from, from Radical. One of the downsides I forgot to mention earlier with this is that um, if I ever need to have this cleaned, it's going to have to be sent in. This is a, meaning the baffles in it, this is a uh, pinned and welded suppressor onto the 10 half inch barrel, so there's no taking it off. So that's why this is legally meeting a 16 inch rifle. Of course, there's pros and cons to that because you know, many of the states you think, oh, I need to have a 16 inch because some of the states I'd go to, they don't allow uh, short barreled rifles. Well, same states that often don't allow short barreled rifles also don't allow suppressors. And many of those states also don't even allow a threaded barrel on it. I live next to one. It's just like, there's no way around anything with it. Basically, you got to bring a 1022, a Marlin 1022 with a tube fed if you're going to go to that state and then it has to be locked up and you have to be going to a specific range or, or some type of shooting event so yeah there's uh that whole idea of get a gun that you can carry across everywhere i think is is kind of moot and that's a sad sad state in our country i would say all right so let's get to shooting this and i have some m855 I've got their winchester i did just do a video showing and make any difference what brand it is at least out of two brands so, let's get to shooting. Clear the crud out of my... All right, that's the M855. We'll next go with some of this 77 grain AAC ammunition. It's their precision round. Again, not a precision rifle. Let's see how precise we can get with it. Okay, now I have this AAC precision. Move to the other spot on that. All right, take a look at that. We'll do one more round. All right, so up next we've got some 77 grain Boattail Hollow Point match from AAC. And uh, we'll take a look at that. You know, one of the challenges is, well, one, it's raining. 
So that's definitely a challenge. And then also, targets are small enough what I'm shooting at that I don't know if I can shoot, see the same spot every time. You can really get on a spot. It's just kind of a big blur a little bit. This 3x, so small targets, 100 yards. If it's a big target, no problem. All right. Well, everything ran fine. I've never had a malfunction with this gun. Um, so let's just take a look and see what, what we're looking at with uh, all these charts. I just want to conclude with this video that this has been a fun gun. I really enjoy having this Radical Arms integrally suppressed system. I don't know that going backwards in time, this was my first 5.56 rifle. I don't think that would be my first 5.56 rifle. I think going backwards in time, I would just get a normal rifle, add a suppressor to it. At the time I bought it, I was like, oh, I may want, I'm going to add a suppressor for sure, so why don't I get one integrally suppressed? One of the challenges with that is maybe you go three to 5,000 rounds. I may have to send this back in to get cleaned. I mean, certainly I'll do my best with cleaning with it, but let me know what you think. Also, many of you may comment on here, why do I have my gun labeled 556? Uh, I did that a couple of years back. I brought it out to the range with some uh, nephews of mine, and I had a 300 blackout, and I had a 556, so I had all my mar mags marked. And had a grease pen market with this and I just haven't cleaned it off with that. I just want to make sure that I never try to shoot a 300 blackout round through my 556 gun. That's why it has looks pretty stupid and pretty dorky but eh, that's trigger bar style and that's how I roll. So let me know what you think about this Radical Arms integrally suppressed system. Is this something you get? Is it your 10th AR? Is it your first AR? What do you think? What do you think of it for home defense? What do you think about the long range? I'm actually pretty impressed with some of the long range shots we're able to get, we're able to get out of it, especially with that 3x magnifier. I thought it was going to be a lot worse than that. Still seems to be two to three MOA, which is pretty standard for an AR-15. Yes, they can do way better than that. This is not one of those rifles, not one of these setups. I bet if I put my 10x on it, I could do a little bit better. But let me know what you think. Please put your comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe this video. I appreciate it, every everybody uh, watching these and. Hope everyone has a great day. Okay, take care.